the supplement group had substantially higher frequency of going into remission without needing surgery or radioactive iodine. I'm going to discuss a recent study, a new study on Graves' disease. This journal article came out in August of 2025. So again, just a few months ago, and it discussed how taking L-carnitine and selenium can be beneficial for Graves patients that are taking methimazole. So if someone is on higher amounts of methimazole, the combination of that methimazole along with L-carnitine and selenium might allow the person to take a lower dose of the methimazole. I think this study is important as it still demonstrates the benefits of combining selenium and L-carnitine. There's been separate studies showing the benefits of selenium and thyroid autoimmunity and then there's also been a few studies showing that L-carnitine in larger doses can block the entry of thyroid hormone into the cells. We don't know the relapse. That's as far as the relapse percentage. So again, keep your expectations in check. And then, like I said, welcome to another episode. And so in this episode, I'm going to discuss a recent study, a new study on Graves' disease. And this uh, came out, this journal article came out in August of 2025. So again, just a few months ago, and it discussed how taking L-carnitine and selenium can be beneficial for Graves' patients that are taking methimazole. And even if you're not taking methimazole, I think this study is important as it still demonstrates the benefits of combining selenium and L-carnitine. There's been separate studies showing the benefits of selenium and thyroid autoimmunity. And then there's also been a few studies showing that L-carnitine in larger doses, like two to 4,000 milligrams, can block the entry of thyroid hormone into the cell. So it could, in some cases, be used as a substitute for antithyroid medication. Now, again, I'm not specifically telling you to use L-carnitine as a substitute, but again, this is the first study, at least a pretty sure it's the first study that combines selenium and L-carnitine and looking at this in Graves patients. And again, this does involve patients taking methimazole too and increase essentially increasing the effectiveness of methimazole. But I think it's still worth exploring maybe the possibility of taking selenium and L-carnitine by itself. And we'll talk, I'll talk more about this because it's not like I haven't been recommending selenium to most of my Graves patients and L-carnitine. I can't say I recommend L-carnitine across the board. Definitely recommend selenium more frequently, but I do have a number of patients that take L-carnitine too. So let's talk a little bit more about the study. And again, I have the study in front of me, which I'll, I'll make sure again to include the link to the study in the show notes. So I'm not going to read the study verbatim, but essentially the trial asks, can adding a combination of L-carnitine and selenium to standard methimazole therapy improve outcomes in new Graves patients? And so it involved 60, 60 patients with newly diagnosed overt Graves, and they were randomized into two groups, one with methimazole alone, and then another group with methimazole and a supplement containing L-carnitine and selenium. And the research measure, researchers measured the thyroid hormone, so, that, so free T3, free T4, also measure TSH, and then also looked at the TSH receptor antibodies or TRAB. I don't think specifically the thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins, because you could test the TSI in a blood test, but you could also test the TSH receptor antibody. So they looked at the TRAB and TSI. If you're not familiar, thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins is a type of TSH receptor antibody. And then also looked at symptom scores every two months for up to 24 months. And patients also filled out the questionnaires about classic hyperthyroid symptoms, such as increased resting heart rate, tremors, heat intolerance, irritability. And so let's discuss some of the major findings. So as far as what did not change significantly, so the time for TSH, free T3, and free T4 to normalize was not significantly different between the two groups. So in other words, by adding L-carnitine and selenium, it didn't seem to speed up the normalization of the thyroid hormone levels compared to just taking methimazole alone. And then, so what did improve uh, in those that took the L-carnitine and selenium along with the methimazole. So, so first 
the antibodies turn negative sooner, which is great. And uh, I mean, I mentioned before, methimazole itself is, I mean, there are a lot of people that take just methimazole. I mean, most, most people are just taking methimazole. I mean, some are taking selenium just on their own. It's not like people have to go full out taking a natural approach. But I guess the point is, methimazole, uh, of course, is focusing more on the thyroid than the immune system. But there have been a number, of, a good number of studies showing that selenium can influence the antibodies, which makes sense because it helps to reduce oxidative stress. Now, it's not addressing the triggers. So if you have other triggers, uh, and again, I could talk more about this, but L-carnitine, I, I don't know of any studies showing that L-carnitine normalizes antibodies. So, but anyway, in those taking L-carnitine, selenium, along with the methimazole, the Trab antibodies turn negative sooner. And that suggests the supplements uh, that they took may help with the autoimmune component of Graves. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that was that's that's a big finding. And then also another positive finding, those taking the supplements had a lower methimazole dosage, so required less methimazole on average, and their total lifetime exposure to the methimazole was significantly lower. So again, that's another benefit too. So if someone is on higher amounts of methimazole, let's say 20 milligrams, which is kind of like a medium dose. Uh, I'd say 40 milligrams is on a higher dose. And, and, and I guess we could say 40, whatever, 20 milligrams, 40 milligrams, perhaps the combination of that methimazole along with L-carnitine and selenium might allow the person to take a lower dose of the methimazole. And again, it's not a surprise because the L-carnitine I mentioned has some anti-thyroid effects by blocking the entry of thyroid hormone into the cell. And then selenium addresses, not addresses, but can affect, positively affect that autoimmune response. Again, it's not addressing, removing triggers, healing the gut, but it helps to reduce oxidative stress. And uh, so, to, so again, it makes sense that the combination of the selenium, the L-carnitine, along with the methimazole could, yeah, could result in less methimazole needed. And uh, I'd love to see a similar study with bugleweed, like combining bugleweed with selenium or bugleweed with L-carnitine, or again, maybe the three of them, but that study is not out yet. So, but anyway, so a uh, higher rate of remission is also another benefit. The supplement group had substantially higher frequency of going into remission without needing surgery or radioactive iodine. Now, again, we don't know the relapse. That's the as far as the relapse percentage, because we see that all the time with people who are just on the methimazole, 20 months go by, and then the doctor mentions that they the person's in remission, and then they're taken off the methimazole, and then perhaps a few months later. I mean, sometimes, maybe longer than a few months, but many times, if not most of the time, they'll relapse because the person could take lower amounts of methimazole, so, which is always a benefit. Methimazole commonly causes side effects, also does have some, does affect the gut in a negative way as well, the gut microbiome. So again, the less of methimazole you could take, the better. Yeah. And then the symptom control, better symptom management. So, and there were some limitations of the study. So um, it was uh, not a blinded study. There was no placebo control. So the patients and doctors may have known who was getting the supplements and this can influence symptom reporting or expectations. And then the symptom questionnaire that was used was not fully validated. Again, the supplement dose and form matters. And, now, and it's worth also mentioning is that only 83 micrograms of selenium was taken and only 500 milligrams of L-carnitine was taken. And I say only because I commonly recommend 200 micrograms of selenium and so do a lot of other practitioners. And when it comes to L-carnitine, those studies show, the other studies show that between 2,000 milligrams and 4,000 milligrams, I think I said that earlier, between two and four grams of L-carnitine is what's needed to block the entry of thyroid hormone to the cell. So this only used, this study only used 500 milligrams of L-carnitine. So it would be interesting if different doses was were used too, like 200 milligrams of selenium along with uh, higher amounts of L-carnitine. Now, 
If you are looking to do everything you can to save your thyroid, in addition to watching my videos on YouTube, you also might want to subscribe to my free online newsletter, which is called Healthy Gut, Healthy Thyroid. Not only will you get the latest news on how to heal your gut and restore your thyroid health, but during each edition, I'll demonstrate a different blood or functional medicine test marker that relates to healing your gut and or your thyroid. There will also be an Ask Dr. Eric section where not only can you see questions that other people have asked related to gut and thyroid health, but you can also submit a question for me to answer in a future edition. To subscribe to the Healthy Gut, Healthy Thyroid newsletter, please visit saymythyroid.com forward slash newsletter. I also should mention that over the years, again, I've, I have a lot of people take selenium. I'd say the majority of people eventually take selenium. Now, if you just start to work with me, maybe I, I don't I don't always give it like after the first consultation. So if you went through like a single consultation, you're like, hey, Dr. Eric didn't recommend selenium right off the bat. Again, I don't always recommend, usually I'm recommending it, if not initially by the second consultation. L-carnitine, I don't always recommend. Again, from a symptom management standpoint, I've had a lot of success with bugleweed over the years. And so I typically recommend bugleweed initially. And it depends. There are some people who do take bugleweed along with the L-carnitine. There are some people where the bugleweed just it doesn't seem effective and then they switch to the L-carnitine. And, you know, so I should say that I, I've even though not everybody ha takes selenium and L-carnitine, I have had a lot of people over the years take both of those, again, in higher doses too than what was used in the study. And again, it doesn't always result in normalization of the antibody. So, so again, it's it's something that people could definitely try, but just keep your expectations in, in, in check. And then, like I said, also taking selenium and L-carnitine alone, they're not addressing the underlying cause of the problem. So you still want to do everything that I talk about on this podcast. Uh, just you know, I have many episodes talk about diet and lifestyle, and then looking at other triggers, sometimes infections, environmental toxins and toxicants, including mold, heavy metals, microplastics. Again, this was encouraging. Don't get me wrong. It's a, I'm glad they have the study. Like I said, it's, it would be amazing if they released a similar study uh, having bugleweed used instead of L-carnitine or in combination with L-carnitine. But yeah, I don't know if, if that'll get done unless if I put together a study, which I've never put together a study uh, like this. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I would probably need some assistance doing that. But yeah, it, it, like I said, it would be very interesting to see that combination. But yeah, just want to share this new research study. Just uh, And again, it's specific to Graves patients. So if you have another hyperthyroid condition like toxic multinodule goiter, again, it, it's not autoimmune toxic multinodule goiter. I mean, some people with toxic multinodule goiter can have an autoimmune component, but typically they don't. So the L-carnitine might help with the thyroid hormone. And of course, a lot of people with toxic multinodule goiter are also told to take methimazole, but we're not, we wouldn't be modulating the immune system like we, like this study is uh, attempting to do and successfully um, succeeded in, in doing that. So yeah, so like I said, just wanted to share this study, just uh, really found it interesting and Hope you found it interesting as well. And then also I wanted to mention that, as you know, if you're dealing with Graves or a different type of hyperthyroidism, living with Graves or toxic multinodular goiter or subclinical hyperthyroidism, it can feel incredibly lonely. Uh, you go online searching for answers and most of what you find online is about Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So most of the information is hypothyroidism. Hashimoto's, even most podcast episodes, most podcast episodes that focus on thyroid health. Uh, I think really this is the only one that has more of an emphasis on hyperthyroidism and Graves. And then when you go to your doctor, of course, they're saying the same three things. Take the antithyroid medication, do radioactive iodine, or do surgery. Pretty much one of those three options. You know, no one explains why you have hyperthyroidism. Um, for those with Graves, they don't explain what your antibodies mean. And they might just test them one time, the very first time. It might be a struggle to retest them. Again, it could be confusing, overwhelming, and at times it makes you feel like the only one going through this. And that's one of the main reasons why I created a new community specifically 
for Graves disease as well as those with other types of hyperthyroidism, that's not on Facebook uh, because no one should have to walk through this alone, confused and unsupported. And so inside this group, uh, we focus on answers you can't find elsewhere, as well as uh, give support that really can make a big difference. And th the name of the group is Healing Graves Naturally. Uh, like I said, even if you don't have Graves disease, if you have a different type of hyperthyroid condition, I think you could still benefit from joining. And I do have a hyperthyroid related group on Facebook, but it's just really large, It's which might sound appealing. It has close to 25,000 members as of recording this. And it, to me, it's just overwhelmingly large. It's, uh, uh, yeah, just, it's, it's really, I, I feel like I wanted something smaller. I wanted something also outside, like off of Facebook because Facebook could just close my group at any time. But as far as some of the benefits of, of this group, uh, which is on a platform called School, and um, so one benefit, obviously, it gives hope beyond the standard three options. So you're not going to hear about antithyroid medication, radioactive iodine, surgery. I mean, not to say others might not bring it up in the group, but again, the goal is to go beyond those three treatment options uh, with natural root cause approach, approaches, of course. And then, of course, you'll get some guidance from someone who's been there. You know, I've been in your shoes. As you know, I personally overcame Graves' disease. And so I know the fear, uh, you know, the roller coaster of symptoms. And, you know, I know what works and what doesn't work. And uh, inside, I also talk about uh, my process to save thyroid method that I've been using to help um, people, not just in the United States, but pretty much throughout the world. Uh, you know, for many, many years, I've been in remission now since 2009 and been working with other people ever since then. And then evidence-based natural solutions. Again, that's what this episode was about, just giving some updated research, you know, practical science-backed strategies, nutrition, lifestyle, functional medicine insights. And uh, yeah, and just right now, I, I wanna let you know the group is free for now because my goal is to help as many people as I can. But at the same time, I don't want it to get as big as Facebook. And so my plan, is for it to eventually, it's, it's probably gonna become a paid group eventually. It's not gonna be within the next few weeks or probably not even the next few months. But again, it's, it's it will most likely make the transition again to a paid book group. Now, those who are free will not have to pay anything. Once you're in the group, you're in the group. And, and again, it won't be like a massive charge, but still you might as well join for free while you can. And then also as an incentive to join, You'll also get gain free access to my brand new Graves Disease Survival Roadmap training. And it's not just like a single video. This is almost really like a course. I really should call it a course because it has multiple modules, has uh, eight modules. And um, all you have to do, click the link in the show notes uh, to join the community. And uh, yeah, I think you'll be happy that you did. And uh, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. It, as usual, I hope you found the information I presented to be valuable. This is, again, in this case, the L-carnitine selenium combination along with methimazole. But as I said, if you're not taking methimazole, also maybe something to look into as well. So thanks again for tuning in. I hope you found the episode to be valuable. And of course, look forward to catching you in the next episode.